Cairo 7 is listening to your voices during Pride Month. Tonight, we are taking a look back in time. And Cairo 7's Tracy Leong spoke with a historian about the importance of Seattle's Pioneer Square and its place in history even before Stonewall. Walking through Pioneer Square, Seattle's LGBTQIA history is largely invisible, but not forgotten. Yeah, it was um, the 611. Um, that was at uh, where Butler Garage is now. Historian and UW PhD candidate Julian Barr is committed to preserving Pioneer Square's history, pointing out the transformation of the neighborhood and the stories behind their disappearance. Before the Stonewall riots in New York uh, and Pride starts in the 70s, there was so much more going on. There was a very, very long history of queer folks coming together, finding space, living a life. On a quest to reach a wider audience, Barr created Pioneer Square and the making of Queer Seattle, an interactive digital story map. As the Tavern was a lesbian bar. Before uh, the pandemic, Barr was also bar giving walking tours different. to those seeking a more in-depth experience to understand how the city's first neighborhood developed into a queer community in the late 1800s. It's not being treated well, you know, the city kind of doesn't care about it. But that's the, the opening. That's when you can have a little bit more freedom to make a bar in a basement where gays and lesbians are gathering. So it's, it's you know, it had this reputation of being things like seedy and body and things like that. But in reality, it's, it's opening that door. Bar notes Pioneer Square became a gathering place for the LGBTQIA community. In the 1930s, bars and clubs started to open, including the double header, the casino and 611. At the time, same sex dancing was not legal. So these establishments, like many others, would pay off police. They're doing this other thing that it caused a lot of instability for the bars. It was a ton of money. You know, you couldn't, you have to get really popular to succeed. Um, so this is other sort of form of harassment. In the late 60s, the police payoff system was ultimately exposed to the FBI and legislation was passed to stop the harassment. Occidental Park in the heart of Pioneer Square, also iconic for the queer community. It was the location for the first Seattle Pride Parade in 1974 and in 1978, a place for protests and political organizing, ultimately blocking Initiative 13 to uphold gay and lesbian rights. All these organizations really focused here in Pioneer Square was because of its long queer history um, and getting folks involved and getting the community involved. And it worked. It uh, did not pass. Barr's mission to share his knowledge has been especially enlightening for the younger generation. That really genuine excitement to know, like, what was past life like and what does that mean? Especially when you've grown up in a world where, you know, you have marriage equality for like a, like a you know, extent, pretty extensive amount of time now. But like, what does that mean when you didn't have any of that? And while the neighborhood may not physically reflect its rich LGBTQIA history, the stories and memories are being passed on and preserved. Tracy Leong, Cairo 7 News. Well, Seattle Pride is going virtual this year. June 26th and 27th, there will be a weekend full of featured speakers, discussions, and performances. And as the official TV partner of Seattle Pride, Cairo 7 is proud to be a part of that celebration. Your Voices celebrates Pride's. Pride is a half-hour special dedicated to all things Pride. Join us Saturday, June 26th at 9 p.m.